In this lesson, we're going to expand on what we can do with words tables by having a look at the formulas that you can use to do some automatic calculations inside those tables. Have a look at this table which represents a shopping list. It would be nice to add a little heading to this table. So I'm also going to show a few of the things that I didn't show in the last little video. First off, in the Layout tab of the table, you will find Insert Rows. You can insert a row directly below the table, the row that I am busy with. Insert a row a column to the left. Insert a row above. That's the one we're going to be using here. Merge these cells. Also in the Layout tab, you have the option to adjust the height of that particular row immediately. And there we go. And then you have a heading. If you want to add a caption to the table, you can do this as well. We're going to cover this in more detail when we talk about references, but just so that you have this in place and are aware of the facility, have a look at the References ribbon and you will find Insert Caption. As long as I have the table selected or I'm working in it, I can insert a caption and immediately it picks up that I'm working with a table and I can have a caption shopping list. Choose where it is going to be. I'm going to place this below the item so it doesn't interfere with my new heading. And OK. And there we are. A caption for that. You have the option when you're busy setting it up to determine whether or not it's going to show table one. Having done that, when you insert a table of contents later, you can also insert a table of figures and a table of and a list of tables, which will list all the tables in your document. If you're working with a large document or something formal like a presentation or a thesis, that can be a very useful feature. All right, this lesson's actually about inserting formulas. And you'll see the shopping list I have here has a number of different figures presented. There are quantities of items that are going to be purchased, and there are also prices. So you can go along and manually work out the price for each one, 28, 25, and so on. But we want a lazier way to do that. So in the layout ribbon, you will find this data tab. If you have your screen set to a slightly smaller font, which shows a wider ribbon, more options available in the ribbon, then this will probably be displayed directly on the ribbon itself. On mine, to make it a little bit easier for everyone to read in the video, the font size on the screen I'm using is set fairly large, so it is hidden away inside this little data tab. And you will find formula. Formula allows you to perform selected calculations in a similar way to which we're going to cover in Excel. To begin with, though, there are a few basic formula types that it allows. Sum, average, count, min and max are the ones that you're going to be using mostly. Sum and average almost exclusively. And then you have ways of defining which cells you're going to be using. Word defines four directions to describe how numbers are arranged. Left, right, above, and below. These only apply to continuous sets of numbers. As soon as there's a break, that's where the specification stops. I'll demonstrate that shortly as well. Automatically, because it picks up that there are no numbers above and there are no numbers below or on the right, Word has given me some left as my default. So there we are. And it's calculated those two numbers, the sum. But that's not the formula I wanted. I want to multiply these two things together. So we're going to change that formula. Clicking on the formula, I can go back to formula and we're going to change that. There should be a product option. There we go. This will be the product of that product of left, and that will multiply the two together. 
28. Of course, you don't have to use those particular words, sum, average, or product. You can also use the mathematical symbols, plus, minus, times, and divide. But when you're using those, you have to be able to specify the individual cells. For that, Word operates using a grid reference system. The columns are labeled A, B, C, D, and so on until the end of your table, and the rows are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for example, if I refer to a B, that will refer to everything in the second column. Number 3 will be referring to everything in the third row. And the intersection of those refers to a particular cell, in this case, B3. I'll leave this there so that you can refer to it as we have a look at this. I'm going to insert a formula into this table, which is going to calculate the product of a quantity and an item. So we're going data, formula, and I'm going to delete the text that it has given me. You'll notice now, because there is a number above this particular cell, Word has chosen some above, which in any case is wrong. And we're going to choose the cell specified by as milk quantity 1. So it is column A, column B. And the shopping list heading is the first row. Item quantity and item price is the second row. Red is the third row. Milk is the fourth row. It can be B4 times. Remember the little star asterisk represents times in computer systems. And we're going to multiply that by cell C4. And there we are. We have the formula that shows my milk is going to cost me 25 rand in this instance. You can format the numbers automatically as well. If I go back and edit this formula, you will see number format allows me to choose how I want this to display. So I can choose the currency format, and this is going to be displayed in the currency format. Let's insert another one. Formula, we'll use the product way of doing this again. Product, you can type it as well, left, and we'll choose currency. There we go, okay. Have a look at the top left-hand side of your screen. We're going to repeat this just to the right of the undo option, the undo arrow, you will find repeat formula. If I click on that, it's going to repeat that formula for each time I press it. And it is updating for each row in this table. There is one thing you have to be careful of though. If I change one, I don't want just one bottle of milk, I want two bottles of milk. You will notice that the total has not updated. Word tables need to be explicitly told, update the values. This applies to any field value in Word, as you will discover at a later date. Right click, update field, and the correct total reflects. We might as well finish by adding the total, data, formula, and immediately it has chosen some above. It's done that because there are numbers above. And it is now going to calculate that. I'm going to leave it with the default formula. OK, and there we are. The end of my expensive shopping trip. That's it. While Excel provides much greater flexibility and far more that you can do with numbers and table manipulation. For small tasks like this, word tables can be very useful. See you again next time.